May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. <clears throat> Welcome to another Cuke Audio podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. Actually, today is a mini-podcast. Uh, this is another outtake from Zen is Right Now and Zen is Right Here, uh, the little books on uh, vignettes about Shunyu Suzuki. Uh, so this one says, John, I'll tell you who it is right now, it's John Steiner. And I'll tell you who the guy is who John was bugging was Tim Buckley. All right. So um, John arrived at Zazen with a guest who wanted to try it out. It's rare to hear any voice coming from that room during Zazen. John was leaning over and quietly giving some Zazen instruction in Zazen. Tim Buckley leaned over. Tim Buckley looked over at John sternly. John didn't notice and continued. After a couple of minutes, Tim put his hand on John's shoulder and gave him a shush sign with index finger on lips. Just then, Suzuki leaped off the altar, walked swiftly to where Tim was and John, to where Tim and John were sitting and hit Big Tim on the shoulders hard with his stick multiple times. Tim, Tim went back to sitting quietly. Suzuki did, too. John wrapped up his Zazen instruction soon after that. Again, the message was to welcome what disturbance, what disturbs one's meditation and practice. Uh... Yeah, I was there. I was just sitting a couple of seats away. And, uh, you know, what I'd say if I rewrote that, I'd say Tim has started up by leaning back and looking over. <laughs> I mean, it would be easy to let that irritate the heck out of me, right? It's so unusual. I mean, nobody ever does that. You give people Zazen instruction before they go in. And actually, I wouldn't even give them Zazen instruction. I'd say, go, go sit. Just go sit and be still and do what other people do. And it's, it's really better to have the experience without knowing what to do. And uh, you'll be all right. And then you can get Zazen instruction later. See, but you can figure out without any instruction. And you know uh, where I got that sort of attitude from? From Suzuki. He liked that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> And I would give very brief Zazen instructions when I was assigned that. We'd have, like at Tassahara, Zazen instruction at 3.45 in the afternoon for guests and new students. And, uh, and uh, uh, some people would give long ones that included the history of Buddhism. <laughs> really. <laughs> Larry Palmer would give very long ones because he was very thoughtful and wanted to help people. And... Uh, I would give very short ones because I was unthoughtful and didn't care about them. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is, uh, I don't know. I think it's a pretty good story. Why did we cut that? I don't know. Uh, maybe it, it's hard for somebody to understand with that explanation. But um, um, I was just reading what was I reading? Oh, I was re I'm, I'm reading the history of Dharma Sangha, Richard Baker's group in uh, Germany and, and America, but it's really strong in Germany. And I'm reading over the history of it for an in-house publication. I was supposed to write a little something for it. And at one point when uh, they were first, oh yeah, when they, they, they were 
first, they, they got a new building in like 2013 or something, a big building uh, across the street, and it was an enormous leap of faith to get it. And of course, most people thought it was crazy. They couldn't afford it. They didn't have the staff for it. There weren't enough students for it. But um, Richard knows what he's doing, you know, uh, and, he, and he's willing to take chances. Uh, and um, his feeling was, if we get a bigger form, if we if we're more complete, can take care of people better with the physical structure. And a wonderful building next door with a wonderful history. Um, uh, he felt, you know, sort of like that baseball film, uh, Field of Dreams, and build it and they will come. Really, that's, that's what's happened. It really helped the group. Uh, so anyway, when uh, they were, uh, you know, first... Uh, you know, first had it, and they were doing renovation on the Zendo and this and that, and they were sitting somewhere else. Well, they were creating the Zendo. They weren't renovating. They were renovating a room to be a Zendo. And there were there were guys working in there with a jackhammer, and they tried to sit with it and then called Zazen off. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm going to tell them, naughty, naughty. Uh, <laughs> listen, at Page Street, the city center, uh, I've set a, a, a number of sessions there, uh, not as many as a lot of people, but it just seemed like every time. And you know, the Zendo's in the bot in the basement, uh, on a corner, and it seemed like every time we'd have a Zendo, the city would start working on the street right outside the window. It happened. I I would say it happened more than twice. Uh, and, I mean, they'd be digging up the street. There'd be jackhammers. And always, just all sorts of stuff. Nobody said a word. Nobody complained. Well, I don't know. You know, people might have complained. But I, I, no, there were no ripples I noticed. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's just really a boilerplate to me. Zen meditation, anyway, or in Buddhist meditation, is uh, it, it don't rely on a peaceful environment. God, there's a great lecture Suzuki gave I was working on recently, where he says, "You want to have peace of mind? Uh, don't go to a, don't meditate in a, and practice in a quiet place. Do it in a noisy place. <laughs> then you'll learn to have peace of mind with that." Uh, so anyway, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I've told this before, but maybe not here. I don't know. Uh, and if so, and maybe you never heard it, or if you did, you've forgotten it. But I was in a Vipassana retreat here, led by a woman, a renegade woman. I mean, women aren't qualified to do that. But she was, uh, you know, a, biki, a, a bikuni, a nun, who said, fooey on you, and started her own renegade saga. I loved her. I loved to sit with her. Although, you know, our our understanding of things, that the Theravadans is not, uh, it's different. Uh, but I don't worry about that. We're just sitting. I don't care what they think. Uh, anyway, but there's a lot of, a tremendous amount of overlap and agreement, of course. We're all Buddhists, right? Oh, well, we're all people. We're beings. Beings, we all have a lot in common. <laughs> anyway, there was, uh, this was, uh, you know, this was, it was like an 11 day retreat. And man, she was strict as heck. I mean, we were getting up at 3.30 and going to sleep at 10 and, uh, and no breaks. I mean, you had to take breaks. You could take breaks when you needed to. And, uh, but no break after meals uh, and stuff like that. It just kept going, you know. Uh, sitting an hour, walking an hour, sitting an hour, walking an hour, bang. Oh, wow, what a wipeout. Anyway, uh, she'd give a brief talk in the afternoons. And uh, maybe she did it every other afternoon. Anyway, uh, the men are on one side, the women are on another. And some uh, European woman, I emphasize that because Indonesian women wouldn't do this. Uh, and if you were in Japan, Japanese women wouldn't do it. 
we Westerners, we're complainers. Americans more than Europeans in general, but this happened to be a European woman. And she was very, very upset because, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the temple where we sit, Brahma Vihara Rama, up in the north uh, near Singaraja, uh, it, um, it, it's, it's a well-known tourist destination here for up there. Uh, and uh, it's got a lot of beautiful statues and a pagoda and a stupa, you know, really nice buildings. And uh, they're always, man, I don't know how, who funds them, but uh, they, they keep adding on. I mean, I, it was founded in 73. I was first there in 92, and it was, it's quadrupled in size since then. But, um, and it doesn't have a priest. It just has administrator, and there's a lot of retreats and stuff. It had a founding priest, uh, Bhante Giri, who was the great uh, Theravadan uh, uh, bhikkhu from Indonesia, from Bali. He was Balinese. And uh, anyway, so this woman was complaining that a guest, and you know, there's signs there, don't disturb, you know, meditation and progress. A guest had come in. A man, and they're, they're not supposed to be men in there. Uh, and she said, uh, she stood up, you know, and she put her arms in cross, like, no, you can't come in. He just came in anyway. And then she went up and talked to him, said, so, um, you're not supposed to come in. We're meditating, and men aren't supposed to come in. He said, I won't bother you. <laughs> and he just sat down and started meditating. Right, and she said I was so upset. He ruined my meditation. I mean, I have to spend the first fifty minutes getting to that place where the last ten minutes, where I finally, you know, arrive at a place where I'm really meditating, and then he ruined it, and I was so angry, and and then he ruined my whole day. And uh, the the woman, I can't remember her name right now. Her answer was, "Well, you should thank him for that. <laughs> he showed you that your meditation." It's not is not developed enough that you let something like that disturb you. Uh, you know, and she went on in that line, and I just went, "Thank you, wonderful." I loved that answer. Uh, she said, "When you when something interferes with your meditation, say thank you." I do that anyway. So uh, that's uh, all I think I will comment on this, but. Uh, Suzuki leaped off the ton and whacked dear departed Tim. Wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. Uh, and John Steiner, he's going strong in Boulder. And, uh, you know, he's a warrior for peace and has been since before he came to Zen Center, since the early 60s. And he's very concerned about, uh, uh, you know, the political situation in America. And he's very, very, very well connected. Always has been. And he's he's uh, trying to save democracy right now. He said he can't do a podcast until after the election. Well, good luck, John. Uh, ha ha. <laughs> all right. Good luck to us all. Yeah. This has been a Cuke Audio mini podcast. I'm DC Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sonur with Doggy Bandita, Fila Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.